Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Tuesday morning. This is Run It Back. The intros, if I shall. Very good mood this morning, Lou Williams. Wow. Danny Green there on the end. Sham Sharania joining us from Chicago. How fun for you. A normal time, right, Shams? I love that for you. Um, guys, I don't want to speak for the entire world, but the in-season tournament is kind of fun, and I kind of loved it. We had the first game last night, Celtics-Pacers. Uh, yeah, Halliburton, first appearance ever on TNT, which I still find a little bit shocking, but they beat Boston 122-112. The first ever they'll go down in history as having done that. He had 26, 10, and 13. Also, his first career triple-double, zero turnovers. Um, it was a fun game to watch. It felt very playoff e. But as far as the Pacers are concerned, do we need to reevaluate how we speak of them? Is there something else going on here that we maybe haven't given them enough love for? I thought they've earned their respect. I, I, I think they're part of the party now. They're, they're part of uh, one of the teams that need to be talked about this season. They're for exciting sure. to watch. They play at a high level, um, very competitive basketball team. And, and like I said, they're exciting. They play fast, get up and down the floor. Now, postseason, hmm. that remains to be that remains to be seen. That's a completely different beast. But yeah. so far, so good. I think they're in the mix of everybody else that's been been one of those teams that we expect to to do some things in the playoffs. But that part remains to be seen for me. But but this team is definitely exciting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I agree. They are they're playing at a high clip. They're getting up and down the floor. I, I love the way they're playing. Um, Rick Carlisle's letting them, you know, yeah. do their thing offensively. I think. This year, Indiana and Orlando are the two teams in the East that made a jump. Um, you know, the East is usually pretty wide open, but those are the two young teams that Indiana offensively, Orlando defensively, <laughs> um, strangely enough. But they're, they're two teams that are putting themselves in the conversation of, of being a, a solid playoff team in the Eastern Conference. There was the whole uh, Halliburton needed his inhaler at halftime because um, he was having trouble breathing. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's just a norm thing for him. I don't know if it was the experience or the craze that was going Probably on. Probably adrenaline and excitement. Did it feel playoff to you? For sure. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. I wouldn't give them playoff experience gotcha. off this one game. Um, they got a small taste of it. <laughs> I see all the memes of Adam Silver, people, Adam Silver cooking up what he did with the in-season tournament. Uh, you know, Adam Silver dancing in the kitchen. Uh, but yeah, he did, he did his thing. This is it's turning out very well for the league. They're getting a lot of good view, viewership and a lot of fun, a lot of excitement and a lot of a great atmosphere for teams that don't experience it or haven't experienced it in a long time. A city like Indiana, they haven't experienced that playoff like atmosphere in a while. So this is something they, they get a small taste of. I like the term that Rick Carlisle used yesterday. He said it was a playoff simulator. Yeah. Ooh, that's, I like that's, that. Yeah, he said it was a playoff simulator. And, and I agree with him. It's not quite there, mm -hmm. but it gets you in the mindset of this is what it, what it can be like. And so that was fun to watch. I don't know if it's a coincidence that the young teams seem to be embracing it or it feels like they are. Do you think there's a little more weight added to the in-season tournament for the younger guys? Just For sure, yeah. 100%. Um, I read somewhere, I don't know if this is true or not, but they said they have 10 roster guys on Indiana that are making $3 million or less. So that 500000 wow. if they're making that 500, that that's a, a big way. change for those types of players. Um, that means they're pretty much under the cap. There are only very few teams, I think, under the cap. You have 10 guys under wow. roster making under $3 million. So, yeah, for the younger guys, I wouldn't say it means more, but it definitely gives them more excitement, and it can definitely change their year a lot more. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how Vegas would feel and how it's going to look. Because if the NBA knocks this out of the park and they mm -hmm. kind of make it feel like an all-star weekend type of environment, make it a little bit more important than what's, what's, what we're used to, yeah. I think we see a lot of guys get excited for in the seasons to come, you know, because we have fear of missing out. You know, for we, sure. we love for to sure. be involved in the cool things. And so if they get this right, I think you see a lot of guys, not just the young guys, but the veterans as well, um, start getting excited about it. I, I'm... I'm just so weirdly excited more than I thought I would be. I'm excited to see what they do in Vegas. Um, two weeks ago, we ranked the top five point guards. Lou, you mm -hmm. had Halliburton at four. Yes. And now you don't get to say anything about that because you already made your call. <laughs> um, but do you think he's the best pure point guard in the league? It's hard to say the best, the best. Yeah, um, you know, tough. off of one season, but he's proven that. And said so the most important, the most. Impressive part of the stat tonight, that little one being his first triple double, yeah. but the zero turnovers. You know that's the more impressive part to me. Um, having the ball in your hands for that duration of the game and not turning it over throughout the whole duration of the game, but him putting up high clip numbers of scoring usually 30, to 25 to 30 points a game, but also 13 assists and, and making big plays and making great decisions down down the stretch. <laughs> um, without turning the ball over, that, that says a lot for a, high, a, a point guard and a high IQ player. So that, that puts him definitely in the conversation as 
one of the best pure point guards in the game today? One of the best. I think if we call him the best pure point guard, then we have to call him the best point guard in the league. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if we're ready to That's give him tough. that crown yet. The best is tough for anybody. Um, there's a clip I want to play for Lou right now mm. of Halliburton, actually, a, a moment in time with Drew Holiday. Talk to me about, oh, mm. yeah. Mm. Listen, for, for Drew, this happens a lot. And I'm, and I'm, no, and I'm saying that with all due respect, it's, it's like shot blockers. If you challenge the rim enough and you're known for that, you're yeah. going to get dunked on every once in a while. Yeah. So Drew Holiday, with the effort that he puts on, on that ball and things that he's trying to read his spot and he got turned around, you know, good offense beat good defense. And so this happens every once in a while for Drew. That's a great analogy. You play enough basketball, you're going to get dunked on, you're going to get crossed over. But he competes at a high level. He's guarding the Look other team's and he's, best player. And he still yeah. challenged that shot. He, he still got and, back and, and challenged yeah, and the shot. You know, three feet behind the three-point line, which in most times is a bad shot. And it's a good contested shot for the defense. Um, but said so you play enough basketball, you're gonna, that's, that's going to happen, especially when you're playing or guarding the other team's best player every night. Yeah, that was, he had some moments last night. It was just fun. Shams, we, the Celtics on the other end, of course, they have they have big aspirations. They want to get to the finals and win that whole thing. What were some of the problems you noticed last night? My concern with the Celtics is a lot that we've seen the last couple of years, which is late game execution. They get outscored 17 to 7 down the final minute 30 of this game last night. And I just think, yeah, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown have been unbelievable throughout you know, the seasons and throughout playoff runs. I, but late game execution, I just think that's still an issue for this team. No Christos Porzingis, so that was a significant loss in the lineup. We'll see how he comes back, but a strained calf, that's something that you want to be careful with with Porzingis, given his injury history. But I just think from a Stiles perspective, getting timely baskets, the Celtics clearly were, were a little bit lacking last night. Um, and 21 points off the bench. Sam Hauser scored a little bit. Uh, Luke Cornett scored. Uh, the Pacers, on the other hand, they got 33 points off their bench. They had multiple players in, in double figures coming off the bench. Um, the Celtics gave up a couple first-round picks in that Drew Holiday trade. They still have a few first-round picks left over. I expect the Celtics to be active in the trade market as we get closer to February to try to see if they can beef up their, their bench rotation and, and players coming off uh, that bench and see what they can do in the trade market. You know what, the, the struggles, the bench is the big one. Everyone's mentioned that. You guys have all talked about it a, a lot because they don't seem to have one. Um, the struggling in the half court. I know Kristaps Porzingis obviously in street clothes last night. When he comes back, is that enough to fix some of these issues? Or are you with Shams, like they need something else? I think it patches a leak. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it patches a leak. He gives them um, a, another big that can stretch the floor out, uh, Al Horford type of guy. That's, and he can go out and get 25 to 30 on, on any given night. He's a post-up threat. You know, he's one of those guys that can create switches on the offensive end, and so he gives them a look. But as far as this basketball team, they got two of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the league. This is their identity. This is who they are. They're going to live and die with how those two guys carry them on the offensive end. And so, and that's by handing them the ball and telling them to go get a bucket. Will that be a problem in the playoffs? You know, they've gotten, they've had some deep playoff runs. I think for them to get over that hump, they got to be a better half-court team. I think they just have to be better defensively. I don't think him coming back patches it up, but it definitely helps. Offensively, they can score more with him there. Uh, defensively, he protects the rim a little, a lot. Well, let's say a lot better than they've <laughs> he's had. He's a decent rim protector. Yeah, he's a de decent rim protector, yeah. but he's he's better than what they they don't have when he's out. So, but it doesn't make them a great deal better defensively. Right. So that's the like. So they don't have the depth from the bench, and they lack defense. So that's the biggest concern from my standpoint for them is the defensive side of it, and also half court uh, playing in the half court set. And, I, and, and this team, the Celtics, they've never had a bench to me. Right. They've always been a top-heavy basketball team, and it's gotten them this far. And so I'm, I'm not completely concerned about them because that's how they've been playing. But I think for them to get over the hump, some of these things have to be addressed. Something different has for to sure. occur, uh, occur. Jason Tatum, last week we talked about him being the best. Uh, mm -hmm. This was where we got stuck. Was he American or American-born? But Chandler's <laughs> not here. We could ignore that now. Um, best American player in the league. Do you agree? Uh, I think he's up there in the top three. I mean, it's it's hard to say. Who's your three? Say. Quick, go. That's tough, man. That's <laughs> yes, tough. Yes. American, so like you said, when you think of the best players in the league, and 
when you think about them, they're not all of them American. Right. Like Jokic, Joel. Exactly. Even though Joel wants to play for Team USA. So that was the argument. Chandler wanted to argue that Joel's now American. I was like, but are we doing American or American? Joel turned into a whole thing. He's not American. He's no. championed Africa this entire time. I, like, it's, that's the trick. American it, born. If he wants to play for Team USA, he should say that. <laughs> it's, it's very tough to say. But, Great point, actually. I mean, as we talk later in the show, we're talking about the, the matchups of the in season tournament coming up tonight. Um, you know, the most consistent to me, Braun has been. Oh, duh. Yeah, that's a good one. You know, so. <laughs> Braun, Steph. He's been, a, he's been a pretty good American for the last 20 years. Yeah. So um, I always have him in the conversation, uh, regardless of, of who's up and coming. And then, you know, the younger guys, you know, Ant Edwards is one of the younger guys up and coming, American players. Um, but I think Jason Tatum for sure is in the top three. I, I can't rank them or give it's you. It's tough. I'd have to really go through. We like rankings around here. Danny. here we man, need lists tough. all day, every day, Danny. Um, we got games tonight. Knicks, Bucks. That is the. Uh, that's who's going to play Indiana. The winner of that one. Who's the better matchup? For Indiana, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be the Knicks. I would. I, for me to advance and have to look at Giannis, Dame, Chris Middleton, um, and the rest of that, and the rest of that group, I would much rather play the Knicks. I would too, but I think the better matchup for Indiana would be the Bucks, because I think in mm. New York is going to muck up the game. You know how Tibbs is. They're going to slow it down. Um, I think defensively, New York is a little better than Milwaukee um, all around. Wow. I think Milwaukee has, um, with the trade, when they lost Drew, well, I wouldn't say lost Drew, when they oh. traded Drew, they lost a lot of defense in, in that aspect. So uh, I think Indiana, if they want to get up and down and play and score a lot of points, it's against a Milwaukee Bucks team. They're not going to do that against against a New York Knicks team, I would think. I'm just apprehensive because the Knicks are just hot and cold for me. You That's just fair. never you never know what version yeah. of the Julius Knicks that Randall you're going gonna to get. And so for me, I just feel like when it comes down to it, Milwaukee, they can they got a couple of guys they can throw the ball to that can win them a basketball for game sure. on any given night. And the Knicks do too, but you just don't know what version of, the, of that team that's going to show up. For sure. I wonder if we'll know right away if it's going to be one of those nights. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. I, I'm really pulling for that. Um, Shams Vegas, as it gets ready for this first of its kind tournament during the NBA season, how will it be? Do we have any insight on what to expect? Yeah, I think Lou called it like all star. Uh, like, I, I think it's gonna go the other way. I think they're gonna, I think the league is gonna make it more like the NBA Finals. We're gonna see an NBA Finals light or whatever you wanna call it, simulator of the NBA Finals with the media day on Friday. Danny's been a part of a ton of media days. I'm, I mean, I don't know how it's gonna compare to an NBA Finals media day, like the, the attention that you get in whatever host city that, that the NBA Finals is in. I don't know how it's gonna, co gonna compare in Vegas, but that's the only uh, similarity you can make to it. It's Vegas. Yeah. It's Vegas. Bright it's gonna lights. Be, it's going to be the amazing. It's going to be bright. Um, look, Twitter is usually a cesspool of garbage, uh, but sometimes it's positive. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to show yeah, Drew some. Ski. There you go. Shout Let's, out to Drew Ski. Adam Silver getting love. I mean, look, a lot of us are, maybe we thought it was going to be a bad idea. We didn't love, oh, yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Uh, cook it up the end season From tournament. The bear show. Yeah, it's so good. We got a lot of chef references. I, I love like it. I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Although Gordon he actually looks like Adam Sue. <laughs> it <laughs> does, actually. Yep, that's good. Twitter, Twitter approves. Some of us were wrong about this tournament. Um, Pelicans, Kings. I think some of us predicted this one incorrectly. What happened? Kings lose 127-117. Well done, New Orleans. They move on to Vegas as well. Brandon Ingram finished with 38-6. and six. Herb Jones had 23 points and always want to check on De'Aaron Fox, who threw in 30 points. Um, Shams. This wasn't close for a lot of it. So if, if you're taking away something for this Pelicans team, what is it? First of all, Zion Williamson last night, he says we can do something really special. The fact that he believes that, I, I think it's a good sign for them. When you watch this team, how it's developed the last few, few weeks, the offensive balance throughout the roster, Zion Williamson only scores 10 points. But you get B.I., he scores 30. Herb Jones, undrafted player, he scores 23. Mm -hmm. They have so much depth right now. And if these guys are all healthy, last year we saw before Zion Williamson strained his hamstring. They were competing for home court advantage in the Western Conference. Then he gets hurt, and their season just nosedives a little bit. But now these guys have been healthy. Can't remember the last time Ingram and Zion Williamson have played this cohesive. This long of stretch of time that these two guys are on the floor, and Jose Alvarado comes in the game last night. <laughs> I thought he completely changed the, the tone of the game. Uh, he has that GTA moment uh, where he steals yeah, he the did. ball in, in, in the front court, um, comes from behind, and, and to me, the way he changes the tone, he only has nine points, but they were down double digits. They got it to within one or two points to end the first quarter, and they never looked back. And so I, I agree with Zion Williamson. If the Pelicans are healthy, 
I think they're a legitimate threat uh, in the first round of, of the playoffs if they make it. It's like De'Aaron Fox forgot what Alvarado does. He's just he's right behind you the entire time. Zion, look, he had 10 points in 28 minutes. Um, Charles Barkley talked a little bit about his physical, what he <clears> saw <throat> when he saw him out there. It doesn't seem to have the same explosiveness, although Barkley said it in a more Barkley-esque manner. Um, are you concerned at all? Not for me. Uh, the way that Brandon Ingram was playing, the way that C.J. McCollum was playing, I think this is, this is okay for him. It's going to take him some time to, to find his rhythm, get into a groove. This is a guy we hadn't seen playing 40 games in two years, right? And so yeah. to see anything positive from him, to see him consistently on the floor is a great start, especially when you got two guys that you can hand the ball to and they can go get a bucket for you. And that, that pressure isn't on him for them to be there. But I saw some defensive plays that he made last night. Um, that were incredible, that he showed his athleticism. He hadn't played over the rim like we're used to him playing, but I think his presence has been felt, so I'm not that, that concerned about it. I'm not concerned at all. As long as he's on the floor, right. that, that's the biggest thing. And he'll get back in playing shape or Charles Barkley shape that he expects him to be <laughs> I know. He over want? time. So as long as he's available, I'm happy. And I, I think he needs to be their best player all around. I think B.I. needs to be their best offensive player and lead the, the charge on the offensive end of the floor and scoring. But Zion, to defensively handle the ball, making plays, and understanding and trusting their process or their system or how he's buying in, as he would yeah. say, um, is the biggest key. And he has to be their best player all around for them to succeed. All right, so I'm glad you said that because, you know, Ingram had the 30 points last night. Mm -hmm. But you're saying Z who is their best player right now? I think Zion is. Oh, um, but I think B.I. has to be their best offensive player for them. Um, he's still trying to get back into his Zion shape. And it's going to take some time. What but is Zion? I feel like a good, I mean, like we've known to question. see him <laughs> as ex ex explosive he's been in the past. I think um, that's out. You know, it, it, it's tough, but I, don't, I think he, I think he can get there. I think he can get there. So it's going to take some time, but I think he needs to be their best player always. Um, right now, Bi is playing as their best player, um, and offensively, he's leading the charge. So I think he needs to continue that for them to be successful. But as long as they stay healthy and he's available, Zion's available. That's the big they one. always have a chance. But the X factors for me on that team, Trey Murphy and Herb Jones. Okay. That's yeah. oh, well. See, we didn't even get it. But hold on, wait. You don't think Zion can get back to physical shape? No, I don't. I, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I think he's just he's getting older. He's getting more mature. Even though he's still a he's still a young guy, but he's mm -hmm. he's naturally gonna be this big muscular kid. He's not old. No, not at all. I said he's getting older. And so well, who isn't? Yeah. Yeah, but once you <laughs> play, when, when you begin to play these <laughs> games and you travel. Slowly for surely, it's going to catch up with you. And it's, it's harder and harder to play above the rim. It's harder and harder to run that floor and be a lob threat like he's always you been. You have to have a different type of discipline to get back to your I mean, younger he's only, he's self. Not, and wait, I don't think Lou sure. trusts that in Zion right now. So he's going to be that, 23. That was, I was trying to dance around it, Danny, but I appreciate it. <laughs> so you think he just he's has... He's 23, lives in New Orleans. The food is great. The willpower. I, we're we're going to see a, a thinner version of him. Yeah, he has the willpower to stay where he's at right now. But to get back to the younger Zion... <laughs> we got to send him to a crappy food city. Yeah, but he has a chef. He has everything. There's no excuse. Uh, listen, has everybody a has a chef. <laughs> and your chef is going to cook whatever you take your chef. He has the resources to do a lot of things. He has the resources to get really good or to get really bad. He really so, does. So. That's, it's kind of funny. It's all right. Okay, we'll keep our eye on that. Um, there's some sound I want to play <clears throat> from Willie Green talking about the win. Here he is. High intensity game, fun to be a part of. Our, I think the guys just relish these type of moments and it's experience for us more than anything. So we can lean on these experiences when we start to get down a stretch, when we face adversity, things like that. And, you know, we love these moments. I mean, I don't know how many of these moments. Um, yeah, it's, it's a young team. And he's talking about it like the experience. That's, that's valuable, right? It has to be. I think, I think atmosphere-wise, yes, they can, they can draw on that experience. Playoffs is a different beast. I'm almost positive. None of these teams in an in-season tournament were going into it trying to take away an option, trying to do the things that no. you're accustomed yeah, to in, in, a, in, a, in a playoff atmosphere, in a real one. Mm -hmm. In the playoffs, you're going to have to play half-court basketball. You're going to have to do something different than what, what's been your calling card throughout the season yeah. in order for you to be successful. I think these games are fun and they're exciting. The playoffs is still a completely different thing for me. For sure. Um, it's definitely chess in the playoffs. This is more of a, a fun NCAA like tournament, yes. you know, having fun. It's still regular season, so they're not looking at these teams. We have to play them in a seven-game series, and what do we want to take? When we start with what things we're going to adjust to, this is a one-game, one-and-done type situation. So it's not like a, you know, who can play off who or read off what after game hmm. one, one and two. So um, it, it's very different, but it is a small taste of what it can be like atmospheric 
yeah. like um, for certain cities. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's way different animal than the playoffs. Um, Pelicans have now beaten the Kings three times this season. I love when this happens, where it just seems like one team has another team's number. Is this that case? We're looking at one of these right now? I, I think so, because realistically, Sacramento, right. I think, when I look at it, I think they're the better team. Right. Um, it just, it, for some reason, it doesn't add up to why they can't beat New Orleans. New Orleans is very up and down, hot and cold, and sometimes they're healthy, sometimes they're not. They play well some nights, some nights they don't look like a playoff team at all. But sometimes you're like, oh, this team could actually make a run. Um, but for Sacramento to be one of the top teams in the West, in my opinion, and to be able to beat like the Golden State Warriors consistently or mm -hmm. to beat, you know, the Lakers or, you know, beat some top teams in the West and then lose to New Orleans, it just shows that some teams just have your number. What, uh, what's a team that you remember that had a number of a team you were on? Man, uh, <laughs> I've played on a lot of different teams. Fair. I can't say one team or the other. I don't. It said I'd have to go really back far. <laughs> to the archives. Because it, it, it's just different. <laughs> but I do remember there's like, there's little brother, big brother moments. You yeah. Know, it was a time when I was in San Antonio, we were the big brother of Golden State. Yes. And at a point, you know, younger brother gets better than the, the older brother. You know, I, I guess the, another analogy would be Marcus Gasol, Pau Gasol. Yeah, no, that's and fair. At one, at one point, you know, that's big brother's going to handle little brother. At, another, in the, at some time, younger brother's going to grow up and... He's going to get tired of Big Brother kicking his ass. So he's going to, you know, time. eventually way, get better. San Antonio, I feel like, also had that with Memphis sometimes. It's like Memphis, for sure. I'm like, what's happening? It's refreshing sure. to hear San Antonio again in here, by the way. <laughs> we Lou, were, we just were, because you're in a we good were, mood we, for listen, one day. I mean, I we, were, we, were a, <laughs> <laughs> we were a heavy San Antonio group. It's a group process. Here. It I is a know. process, and we're being patient. That's, well, that's why I went back to San Antonio days. I know she'd appreciate it. Oh, God. All right, Trey Murphy, we could talk about him. Look, his second game back, he had the off-season knee injury. He had 16 points, and you already mentioned him, that he is one of the X factors. What yeah. do you expect to see more of from him? I don't know if they'll continue to bring him off the bench, but the way Herb Jones played last night, you know, he, he's been a very key factor as well. But those two guys, they're, the, they're the three and D wings. Um, they give them a different type of, of, of look. You know, C.J. and B.I. can score the ball. Zion can play point forward. Uh, and also play a little bit of defense. But these guys are the ones that stretch the defense and also defend, and they, they lead the charge on the wings with guarding the bigger guards, the Kevin Durant's, the LeBron James that they're going to see in the playoffs, uh, the Jamal Murrays. You're going to see Herb Jones get thrown on them or Trey Murphy, you know, bigger, long, athletic guards to affect those smaller guards' uh, shots. So these guys are not only key for them offensively but defensively because they're the ones that are going to be leading the charge on that end of the floor. Um, can we just, my, I love Mike Brown, uh, took a little bit of time in his pregame presser and wanted to sort of scold the media because they're not talking enough about De'Aaron Fox as a potential MVP. I mean, in fairness, it's mm. the beginning of December, but <laughs> it is is, early. Is, it's, it's, it's early. very early. Um, do you agree, though? Is he on that list? I'd like to see how long this list is. You know, <laughs> this <laughs> this early, it's, it's probably a really long like list. It's a really long season. list. Yeah, I mean, this Sacramento team is sitting at fifth in the West for him to be um, a constant part of that conversation. He got to get them in that top three. And I mean, it didn't. It, it's, it's not great for them to get knocked out on their home court for this no. in-season tournament to have, you know, somewhat of a rent for that to happen. And so, on the list, sure. But I would like to see how long that list is. Agreed. And I think a lot of times what we do as people and as as players and coaches. We try to put together the full body of work into one season. You mm -hmm. know, we can't count. Obviously, he was the most clutch player last season. He had a great season all of last year and the end of the season, but you can't add that with this season and be like, oh, he should yeah. be an MVP. MV if you put them together, yeah, he's definitely an MVP conversation. But this season is different from last season. It's a, a regular season award. And so far, there's a lot of guys on that list that's playing very well in the regular season. Um, Damana Sabonis had, you know, 26 points, 13 rebounds, 10 assists. I, I, would, I will say this personally. I think the Sacramento Kings are the team I most hear the question can they beat and then fill in the blank? Like, are they good enough to do this, this, and this? And so I, I wonder if they're missing something. I don't think so. I think they have enough. Um, maybe defensively, is at moments, they have some lapses, but they have the depth, they have the scoring power, they have, you know, the coaching, uh, they have the star power with, you know, Fox and, and Sabonis. So I think they have enough to, to get it done. And they were right there on the brink of it last year wow. playing Golden State. It's just a more experienced, more mature team. Um, that got him. Um, I think if, you know, it's, it's strange how playoffs match up because I think if that season, that, that series ends up differently, it may end up differently for the Lakers because I honestly think Sacramento would have been a tougher matchup for the Lakers um, in the, the next series. So um, 
strangely enough, I think, listen, I think they have enough. I don't think they have anything missing. Um, I don't see them making any moves before the deadline. Right. Um, but that's a, defensively, they need to tweak some things. Uh, better matchup for the Pelicans, Suns or Lakers? Either, neither way is an easy route. <laughs> right. Neither way is an easy route. But listen, the Pelicans played really well last night. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see Suns Lakers tonight. But if I'm gonna pick one, I'm probably gonna say the Lakers. Mm -hmm. um, the Suns, D Book and KD, mm -hmm. they've been playing at a high, high clip. And you know this Lakers team can also be hot and cold at times. And so I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Lakers will probably be a better matchup for them if they want to get a, get to the next round. But it's, it, neither one of these teams are an easy route. Yeah, hope not. I'm gonna go with the Suns. Um, mm. It's it all depends on AD. You know, I, I, it I don't want to see. Uh, uh, Can you aggressive... elaborate on, on AD? Because we ha we have these debates about AD. Like for sometimes sure. we like, just don't he? feel his presence. No, AD, and, and I think this year he's done a better job. Of you don't see it in the numbers on the stat sheet as much, especially offensively. But defensively, he's carrying that what he did last year at the end of the season of, of protecting the paint and. If I'm the Pelicans, I don't want to have that rim protection. I don't want to be bothered by AD's rim protection. I think Phoenix is, has, you know, not good. as good defensively. Yeah. So I think if you want to score, you want to be able to chance to beat a team or be effective the way Zion is, the way Valanciunas is at the rim last night, um, I think you don't want to play against Anthony Davis uh, when he's playing his best basketball. Yeah, if you get a, if you get a hot Anthony Davis night. Exactly. And you never know. You never know. That's the beauty of the system. Um, taking a quick break. When we come back, we've got some Shams scoops. And these guys rank their top five shooters. Run it back. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. I love this part. Shams, Scoops, and Austin Reeves. Oh, got himself a little deal, or at least extended it. What's going on? Yeah, it's never a dull moment when Austin Reeves gets a new contract in Lakerland, but he had a multi-year deal with this Chinese shoe company, Rigor, last summer, seven figures per year. So two months into this NBA season, him and his reps, they rip up that contract. He's, he signed a new extension with Rigor that now includes part ownership. He's going to be a shareholder with the company. He's dropping new shoes on Friday. So for Austin Reeves, we know what he's done this season with the Lakers. He's taken, I think, a step uh, last year in the playoffs, um, you know, was a star, maybe a third star on different nights. But now, as, as a shoe brand, as, as, as has his own sh signature shoe line uh, with the with the Chinese shoe company Rigor. Oh, I'm not gonna just let that pass. Uh, <laughs> you ever heard of Rigor? Brutal. No, I have not. But I mean, but there's always a first. seven figures. Is seven figures. It is. It's Plus a great deal. Smart, smart deal. You know, nobody, nobody wants to make that Magic Johnson mistake. You know, oh. No, say it, say it. Nobody <laughs> wants to make that mistake. We're not getting, you know, stake in, in the company. So wow. it could be a big deal in the, in the future. We never know. I never heard of it, but I'm sure we'll hear of it 20 years from now. It might be one of the bigger sne sneaker companies in China. That's the beauty. He might be a pioneer in on the ground yeah, floor of this so. company. Um, oh, for all we know, they're the biggest company and we're just ignorant. That's probably more likely. But we have talked about the Austin Reeves um, situation in the year 2023. Obviously, he got the deal. Mm -hmm. Now he's coming off the bench. Do you think... This is a good move for him. I think it's a good move for them, <laughs> for the Lakers. Um, with the ball handling, D'Angelo, Russell, you got LeBron James on the ball. You don't need too many guys on the ball in the first unit. I think this gives him more freedom. It gives him a spark off the bench, another aggressor offensively off the bench. Um, so it's better for him. Yes, he can have more you pick and choose and have more opportunities for his spots. And it's better for their team collectively. So it's working. It seems to be working out. And I. I'm, ass I'm assuming they're going to keep it going from he here on out until they, uh, till things seem broken. I mean, it's not affecting his other money, so clearly Man. everything is good in Austin Reeves land. Shams, is it snowing in Chicago yet? It is. We, we, got, we got a couple layers of snow today, but it's all Shut good. Up. We love it. I was kind we of kidding. It. Oh, my God, I love it so much. <laughs> Bring some. All right, we will see you bright and early tomorrow. Appreciate you. <laughs> um, and since we have Danny here, it's what better time than a rake of a situation. 40% from three for his career, so we thought... Why not? Top five shooters. It seems pretty logical. So, Danny, you're first. Your top five. Uh, it's it's hard to rank sh like shooters and scorers. So my number five, I'm gonna go, and I gave this kid a lot of slack, Tyrese Maxey. Mm. Um, his the scout report on him when he first came to the league was, you know, go under. You know, he can't. He's not a great shooter because he's so fast. You don't want him to get to the rim. But last couple years, he's been shooting at a high clip, 40 to 42 percent. 
uh, the last couple of years. So I'm going to put him at number five I like it. as one of my you know, top five young guys shooting. Because most scorers don't shoot well from three. They shoot usually under 40. Gotcha. Even Book, Book is a great scorer, a great shooter. But I don't think he's ever gotten to 40 from three in his hmm. career, interestingly enough. But um, yeah, most scorers don't shoot from three. Tyrese, I think, is one of those guys that's going to be a, a scorer that still shoots really well from three. All right, Tyrese. Number four, Desmond Bain, another guy. He's been shooting at a high clip since he's been in the league. 42, 43%. You can, you know, count it. You can put it, you can scratch him in for that each year. And uh, he's been ha having to carry away. Even though Memphis has not been playing well this year, he's still scoring a high clip, you know, 25 to 30 points for them. And he still shoots 40 plus from three. Dang, all right. I like that. Number three, Klay Thompson. He's a forever going to be in the top five, regardless of how much he's struggling or not. Forever. Forever. As long as he's playing, he's going to be in that top five for me um, in the league. And in history, he's one of the top five shooters in the history of the game. You cannot have him not in the top three while he's an active player um, <clears throat> in, the, in the top five shooters in the league. I like seeing that. So number two, there. Damian Lillard, another one. Um, a score, a shoot to the high clip from three, and you know him and Steph are just in a, a league of their own from the, the range they shoot from. And of course, number one is Steph. Um, so these two guys, you know, you go hand in hand. You, can't go wrong with e either one of them, which, which how they shoot with off the dribble, off the catch, in multiple various ways, but they shoot a, a 40 clip and, and a high volume as well. If somebody didn't have Steph at one, I think we couldn't take the list seriously. But yeah, that's not a pressure on you to tell us your list now, um, top five. I think Danny's a percentages guy. He, For he, sure. he went with the numbers. <laughs> See, me, I'm just a, I'm, I'm a bucket. You know what okay. I'm saying? So I'm thinking in terms of if I got one shot, who do I want to give this basketball to to win me a basketball game? So. At number five, Luka Doncic is Ooh. at my five spot. It was a stretch when I was playing for the Clippers. We literally had to guard this guy before he crossed half court because of the range. <laughs> he gave you guys struggles, though. Yeah, he, he gave had a us. thing with the Clippers. I don't know why, but he had oh, a thing. That's I their, think, he has I, the number. I think once the cover was pulled off of us and he realized that he could take advantage of a few scenarios, <laughs> it began to get a little difficult for us. So Luka at five for me, number four. I'm going with Devin Booker. Okay. Who has a prettier jump shot than Devin Booker? Who's more consistent in the mid-range than Devin Booker? Super smooth, consistent, um, within the three-point range, this guy can totally shoot the basketball. At number three, I'm also going with Damian Lillard. Um, range and consistency. This is another guy that you have to guard as soon as he get out of his car at the arena. You know, he <laughs> just has the range where he can shoot the ball from anywhere. He's always going to be a threat. Number two, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. <laughs> it's Clay Thompson. Fair. For sure. He's he's one of the best shooters in the world. I'm doing I'm giving Clay Thompson number two based on the body of work, okay. the things that he's done over the course of his career. I don't care that he's struggling right now. He's the second best shooter in his league. And obviously it's his brother, the Splash Brothers. <laughs> Steph Curry. There you go. Splash. <laughs> He got notes. <laughs> I don't even have to elaborate on that. <laughs> Steph Curry is the best shooter in the world. I kind of love that Klay Thompson's earned enough equity that he will be on the list regardless. That's a uh, respect. Um, but was there anyone, either one of you, both of you, that you had to leave off that was tough? I mean, it varies year to year. There's a, always a couple guys that I believe up. And Book was one of them. KD, yeah. he was shooting at 50. I had KD there, too. KD was up there at early the season, at like 57 at one point. Um, there's, there's a couple guys that I had to leave off. And there's also guys that don't get the recognition that shoot very well. Malik Beasley in Milwaukee shooting very well. There's always Luke Kennard who shoots very well from three. Um, there's a bunch of guys I go by numbers, you statistics, go, yeah. percentages. So some guys get you know high clip percentages. There's always some of those guys that don't play a lot of minutes or get the notoriety that I think can change the game. And you know you see in Dallas, there's a couple of guys there that can change the game. You know Seth Curry coming off the bench oh, yeah. can, can shoot it very well. <clears throat> and uh, even though Steph is number one, Seth tough. has a really good career percentage as well. Just write down the numbers. Wait, is there anything, Clay, because everyone knows Clay, obviously, with the struggles and whatnot. Could he turn it on and have him above Dame? All it takes is Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, OK. All it takes is one. One game, one shot. Yeah. For shooters, you get one shot. If you get one, it gets you hot, and then one game to get your confidence back. It's where you're not thinking about it and getting in rhythm. But that's just the life of a, of a, of a hooper and of a shooter. It's part of it. The, by the way, the fact that you were writing the entire time like a lawyer in court was quite it's professional. It's my style. Yeah, I it's just every time I was like, what could you possibly style. be writing right now? All right, so we got some guys that were left off, and maybe maybe next time we'll make it. Dame both, though. All right, time for another edition of Say What after this break. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Run it up.
you know, looking forward to his first game. Whenever, whenever he's cleared and whenever he's ready to have his first game, um, I already told my teammates um, that if they play on the same day we play, then I'm gonna have to catch them next game. So, yeah, I told you, on, I told y'all on the play. Uh, family over everything, champs. I love y'all. Uh, so I definitely got to see Bronny's first, you know, his college game um, whenever he's cleared and ready to go. Yeah, I told y'all on the plane. Remember, that's that's my favorite part. Um, nobody has a problem with this, right? This is totally acceptable. Yeah, he's definitely earned that. You know, his yeah. his son's his son's first college game on top of the adversity that he's been through. What he's what he's how hard he's had to work to mm -hmm. get back on the basketball court. I think everybody is perfectly fine with that. I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing this as well. So this is not a problem at all. Same. I mean, we're we're yeah. all fans of the game, but. I think Bron is such a workaholic. When he, I don't think he believed himself when he was saying it. As you can see it in his face. As much as he wants to be there. So you don't think there, he will actually do it? I don't know if he'll actually he's, do it, but he's, he's definitely going to actually that. do it. He, you know, he loves to compete himself. He loves to play. He does. He's going to try to be. He's going to try to do both if he can. He's going to somehow. Yeah. He's going to try to attend the game and then go to his game if he can do that. Oh man. So he, yeah, that's what he does. But um, so as a fan, we're all everybody's looking forward to Bronny being back on the court. I'm and watching not. Him play. I'm not surprised now that he said this publicly. It might get rigged up to his. <laughs> To his oh, liking, he has the, he the has scheduling that sort of changes last he minute. He has that type of pool. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, that I kind of like that actually. If that happens, um, yeah, good. We're all in agreement there. John Sally had some words on LeBron, saying, "I think he can play as long as Tom Brady until he's 45." Mm, mm, 45, mm. though, huh? You played with him. Can he do it till 45? I'm a big believer in. in no, like I don't <laughs> think I don't think you could be Father Time. Absolutely not. And I didn't think that he would make it to playing with Bronny. But the way he's playing this year and how fresh he looks, he looked better than last year to me. So I think he'll be able to play with Bronny, but another 60, because he's going to turn it 39, another five, six years for him to mm. play. Man, I just time. don't see it. But the way he's, he's really making me a believer each year, each game, each month, of, of how fresh and how he's chasing down block and dunks, chasing down blocks, uh, dunking the ball, having five or six dunks in a game, which is unbelievable. I'm like... Man, he, look, he looks young again. I don't know how he, he's going. He's beating Father Tom right now. But I, I, another five years, I think Father Tom's going to get him another another two or so. That's a, that's a long time. It seem, doesn't seem like a lot, but it Not does. Not happening. No, five years is a long time. Sounds fun, though. <laughs> yeah, sounds fun. Um, Jordan Hawkins said the following. Anybody has the ability to become a 40% three-point shooter. Yeah, Danny. Uh, that'll get you on any <laughs> team in the league. Just shooting the ball and defending. All that dribbling boop, is cool, but I just keep it simple. A 40% shooter will get you on any dribble. team. I, yeah, right? I feel like what, what's happening here? No, I agree. I agree with him. I don't know if he should have threw a shot at the dribblers in the league, <laughs> the ball handlers. He really exposed himself. It's probably not his cup of tea. But Fair. no, I, I agree with this take. If you're a 40% guy, you're going to get an opportunity in this league. Shooting is at a premium. You know, mm -hmm. teams are always looking for a guy that they can throw out on the floor that can go make shots for them. So I agree with this take. I I agree that you have a, an opportunity, but I don't agree that anybody can yeah, be a 40% shooter. Right? It's not, some guys, as, as much, as hard as they work at it, they just may not have the touch, they may not have the shooting. So just like not everybody can be a defender. <laughs> he was gifted enough to have the touch, the shooting touch, and the footwork and agility and, you know, hand-eye coordination and the IQ to be able to read people's rhythms and chemistry to be able to play defense. Um, some people can work at it really hard, a long time, a lot of hours, and still not be great at it. So I don't think anybody can do it, but... To his point, a lot of guys are capable of being a role player and, and doing or being great at what they're good at and, and getting an opportunity of playing on, in this league. Dribbling is the hard part, just for the record. It's the hardest part. Um, I love this, Danny. Kyle Kuzma talking <laughs> about the Wizards' struggles. This is... Uh, we can't guard a stop sign. That's kind of really what it boils down to. We let anybody get whatever they want on us, so until we change that, <clears throat> then that's probably going to be the result. I don't disagree with them. Um, <laughs> Who's at fault here? I mean, they need some leadership. And I think this is him trying to be a leader and trying to set a fire under them or light a fire under them. Um, there's other ways to go about it. Um, I don't think this is wrong. I'm not going to say wrong or right, but I, I think he's trying to point out something and let them know. They are lacking some veteran leadership. They're lacking a lot of things. Um, I could see them being one of the teams that make some moves because right now, I expected them to be a lot better. I think that the world expected, not a lot better, but better, for sure. Yeah. We expected more from their two guys. Um, and they're doing what they can, but they, they said they're just lacking the, that, le that leadership. That's the only way I can put it. I mean, he's been a part of some of those Jordan Poole experience moments, though, where they're just sort of hanging out on the court while things are happening all around them. they just bad all the way yep, around. There you go. It's there chaos. It That's it's it. Chaos. This is the question of the day, and I've just been waiting to get to this. Lou, 
Anthony Edwards said he thinks he might be the first <laughs> NBA player to play also in the NFL. Now, of course, he said he wants to win an NBA championship first, but is it going to happen? Hell no. <laughs> Why? No. Listen, just imagine an NBA player saying he's going to wake up and I'm just going to go play football. <laughs> so I would, like to, I would like to hear more context of what he, what he meant by this. You know, maybe if he, he's saying, I'm going to train, I'm going to do what's appropriate to try Let's to get myself. Let's say he's going to train. Train however many months you want. I'm still saying, I'm still saying no. Mm. I'm still saying no. You just have to be built for it. I think when we train, we are big guys. We are muscular guys. We are in shape. But we're in shape to do something completely different mm -hmm. than play NFL football. So no, Ant-Man. Hell no. <laughs> you can't play in the NFL. I'm a dream killer. No. <laughs> you are a dream killer. Come on, somebody's I, I got to. I do think we are able to adapt and adjust to other sports better than other professional sports. But okay. to be a professional, I think you can try, but you have to put your 10,000 hours in. Yeah, and okay, and, okay, and okay. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I don't think six months or a year is going to, where you can just change and transfer over to being another professional athlete or another professional sport player. Um, I think it'll take some time. But I, it would be interesting to watch. It would be interesting. <laughs> you know, I'm obsessed with I, this. I would think it would be a lot of fun, you know, for other you know sports be able to change sports if they can um we just don't see it anymore you know what what Deion sanders was doing back in the day when mike went to baseball and um yeah you know we had a couple guys playing These guys are sports. unicorns yeah you don't have that anymore you know because we had anymore. travis kelsey on the show and he and chandler were you know chandler said he could walk into the nfl and get things done and travis kelsey no chance but then i'm thinking chandler like, said he can do what he could walk into the nfl and get walk a touchdown into. what is, get, yeah, he wrong with us what? there <laughs> are no, what's wrong, wrong with it's us? not it's, listen it's, it's not the world happening. lou you know a lot of the world is delusional <laughs> you listen know. ant man on a basketball court he plays at his own place he's sure. he's smooth yeah. you got three seconds to make a play in the nfl it's it's a different type of speed obviously our game moves fast their game moves fast too especially when you don't know what you're doing and you haven't done it 10,000 hours and you're not a professional yeah. at it. it. Even when you sit out from injury, like I was injured last year, when you come back, the game is, you don't realize how fast, you're like, damn, the game is so fast. It takes a while for you to adapt and adjust to it. I'm just thinking. So yeah. I can't imagine a guy going to another sport and how fast that game seems for them. Listen, uh, okay. as, as freakishly athletic as DK Metcalf is, yeah. if he woke up today and said, I can go play in the NBA, every single NBA player would be offended. For sure. Every single one of us would be offended, and we would make it a point to make it miserable for him to even think that. <laughs> so for God. us to think that we're going to flip-flop and go do something that's way more physical, to, we have a flop rule in the NBA. No, I know. <laughs> if we get pressed at the line, we're not going to fight through that and still run our route. We're going to be looking at the referees wanting the flag. Did you something. see that? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not happening. This is always the great debate of every sport and, and, and every it. barbershop, and we love talking about it, and it's going to be f until, until it happens... Uh, again, because we've seen in the past other players change yeah. sports. But Nate people are always gonna, both. They're always going to debate, you know, whether they can box, whether they can, you know, play mm. baseball, whether they can swim. And, oh, this guy can go here. It's going to forever be, be a debate until it happens. And I think Ant might be one of the first ones to, you know, let us see what happens if we change well, the sport. Well, he said he wants to win a championship first. So oh, yeah. first okay. things first, let's get time. that accomplished. It's take some time. And we got some time. Yeah. All right, <laughs> tell me one player in the league, because now I'm just I'm, I'm stuck down this rabbit hole. Who's going to hit the hardest in the NBA? Who would hit the hardest right now, if needed? Um, Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah. <laughs> no! <Nice. laughs> Isaiah Stewart. He's, he's proven he's about that life. I love that. Okay, right so we like got that. Little content. All right, yeah. that's going to be the next example when we try to figure out how to stick someone in the NFL. I This topic is one of my favorites to do. We could do it every day, um, but we'll move on. Uh, Darvin Ham said, trying to contain Tyrese Maxey is like trying to contain a Lamborghini. Hmm, is this accurate? Very close, yes. He's very fast, <laughs> um, and he's a smart player. You know, he's not just a fast player. He's athletic, he's explosive, but he knows the game. He understands the game. And now the fact that he can shoot, it, it makes it that much harder to guard him because you can't just go under screens. You can't give him space or cushion. You have to guard him out there. Um, that's the reason why Trey is one of the hardest players to guard in this league as well because he can shoot from far out, and he's very fast. Um, so you have to come up with schemes, whether it's to double them or, you know, different types of, you know, schemes on the pick and roll of how to guard them because they're so quick and smart and can shoot the ball from, from deep range. Where are we ranking Lamborghinis on the uh, sports car list? It's pretty high. Up. I'm not much of a sports probably, car type of guy. Me neither, but I would say it's probably top three. Top three? It's the it's good, it's most good. money I've wasted in my life for sports cars. So Wasted? Did you not enjoy them when you had them? I just don't enjoy them. The engines are too loud. They're a, what are you, a a, they're a little small on the inside. That's it's just, fair. it's not a very pleasurable thing for me personally. 
I don't think I've ever disagreed with one of your takes more in my entire life. Oh, you're an engine. Well, the engine's engine. too loud. That's yeah, and the Lamborghini, your, en your engine is yeah, literally but that means, your... that means it's an amazing car. American muscle, huh? I'm no, not American. <laughs> I'm into music. <laughs> I want to hear my music. Oh, that's fair. Okay. I'm a cruiser. I listen yeah. to sports talk like every cool person does. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we will preview the next two games happening tonight. Run it up, the running back. Yeah. Run it up, the running back. Run it back. Run it up. We got games tonight, the second games of this entire beautiful process. So we've got Suns, Lakers, and Lakers won the West group, they were 4-0. Suns were 3-1, got the wild card. There are, there are so many stars in this game, it's kind of silly, but let's just for the sake of it. LeBron, AD, KD, Booker, best player that's gonna be on that floor tonight is who? I mean, I said earlier, I'm gonna go with LeBron. Um, I think he's been the healthiest this year, the most available, and he's just most consistent. You know, Book obviously is always at a high level, but he's been in and out of the lineup some. KD been in and out of the lineup. Um, AD as well. Uh, offensively, you know, a little inconsistencies here and there, but defensively he's been great. Um, but I'm going to go with Bron. Bron has been playing at a, a, a said he looks fresher than to me than he was <laughs> last year, which is unbelievable. Crazy. And he's playing at a, a said at another level that I, I haven't seen. I've seen, we haven't seen anybody do it at this age. So. Mm -mm. I, we haven't seen what LeBron's been doing at this age. Um, extremely impressive. Like I said, every game that he plays, everything that he does on a basketball court at this point is history. Mm -hmm. But pre-injury, Kevin Durant was the best player in the so NBA. So fun. Yeah, yeah. And so among these four, Kevin Durant is the guy. All right, are those your keys as well, or do you have keys that we should be looking out for that maybe no one's thinking about? You know, honestly, I don't have a key. I'm, I'm excited to watch this Me game. Too. Same. I'm just but excited I, to watch it. I do it. have a key. I think AD is the key. He's the, the, he's the he's the puzzle. He's always the key. He's yeah. the key. For Phoenix, um, I, I also think Nurkic because you know, that mm -hmm. matchup. You know, if Nurkic can handle or contain AD, if he plays defensively, protect the paint for them, protect the rim. So I think the big man matchup is the key for for this game. But he, I think I, for some reason I, I got the Lakers. I think the Lakers in season really? tournament they've been playing at another level. They've they've been playing very well. It's something about that in season tournament has them playing at a, at a, a very good playoff like type of chemistry and winning some games. Do you agree, Lakers, tonight? Prediction time. I'll go against the grain. I like the Suns. <laughs> I, I do like the it. Suns. I think the Suns are the better team, but I just that in season tournament, Lakers have been playing really well during that time. I want the value of a, of a LeBron James buying into the in season tournament for everyone to see, I, yeah. that has to be for sure. crazy Listen, for the Le league. LeBron is a fan of the game. Yeah. He watched last night. He's seeing the excitement. He's on social media. He's seeing how the fans are reacting. He's going to come out and try to win this basketball game. And I, but I think all of these guys are. I think we're all in at this point. For so sure. it'll be exciting to watch. Well, the, uh, the other game, of course, is Knicks <clears throat> Bucks. I, I really just simply, who's winning tonight? That's all I want to know. Milwaukee. For sure? I got the Knicks. I, I, I got the Knicks sneaking them. I got yeah. the Knicks sneaking them. Um, last night we saw Sacramento get upset and, and Boston, yeah. Boston. So I think this is the, the tournament of the upsets. And I'm going to go with the Knicks. Uh, and I'm gonna see. I guess Knicks Lakers matchup. I think that's what, is that how how it happens. It would. Oh, in the end. Yeah. The no, they were, no. The next one would be Knicks would play the Pacers okay. or, you know, the Bucks. If I always it's lean on star power. So. So Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Yeah, Jalen Brunson is a star. However, he's not a Dame Lillard star at this point of his career. Sure. I got so. the Lakers in the finals and. Indiana. Oh, I love this. Okay, that's yeah. going to be fun. We'll get your predictions tomorrow. And everybody else is. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>